All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of The Urban Gardener. I wanna thank you all so much for joining me here today on this episode, and if you haven't already, please hit that button right down below, the subscribe button, and actually hit the bell notification right next to it as well so that you can be notified of upcoming episodes of The Urban Gardener as we continue growing here in the summer season right now. The heat is really hitting really good during this August, and, um, yeah, it's really bright too. So I'm trying to get through this here real quick without squinting too much or having to wear sunshades at all. But um, I just want to kind of touch back on and do kind of an episode and look at something here. I'll put an iCard up above right now to an episode we did several episodes ago called Not Quite Knee High by the 4th of July. And that was a reference to the old saying, knee high by the 4th of July for your corn to kind of know that it's been growing or it's at the right pace of growing throughout the season, I guess. So if it's by knee high by the 4th of July, you should be doing pretty good on your corn grow. But for us this year, we did get our corn in probably just maybe a week before the 4th of July actually happened. So by the time the 4th of July, when we filmed that episode, we only had just really small starts going. And after a week, of those starts being planted we also went and planted another set of corn on our back alleyway so today i want to kind of go around and take a look at the corn that we've got growing here oh also you can tell and see behind me i got my neighbor's uh, garden here in the alleyway that he's growing too his corn's really really starting to grow up there and get tall something we'll be keeping an eye on here as this season grow goes on too he's got uh, some really tall white mexican type corn that he grows in his garden plot here and it should get really really tall way way up there so uh, we'll kind of keep an eye on that as the growing season continues but today we're gonna go take a look at our corn that we got growing here on our side alleyway next to our fence here and in the back alleyway plus I want to kind of go through and take a look at some of our beans that we got growing here today here in the garden as well too because we got a couple of different varieties of beans growing and they're getting going right now so uh, I thought we would take a check in on those as well so let's get growing So here on our side alleyway garden patch, just on the other side of the fence line here, the other side is the uh, back patio area. We've got all of our corn that we planted out in this plot. So I referenced about the video before, the not quite knee high by the 4th of July. They have really, really grown since. And see up at the top there, they've got all of their pollen tassels are out and releasing all of that pollen down into the plants. And right onto what are our corn silks. Now these are at the very end of your ears of corn as the ear is forming. Pollen's landing onto its the corn silks here and helping to form each of those kernels of corn on your ears. Now, if you've ever noticed any corn uh, cobs that you've had where they're missing a lot of the uh, kernels, it's because they're not getting pollinated. Each one of those little strands on that corn silk leads to one single kernel of corn. And they all have to be pollinated. As you can see, this plant's putting out a couple of different ears here per stalk. We've got some in the back here just getting to forming right now. And each of our stalks are putting out at least one ear and if not on some of these stronger stalks, we're getting two ears. So 
So this corn is growing really, really well. Really excited about uh, getting to harvest out those ears this year. Right down below our corn patch here on the side, we've got a volunteer Prax cherry tomato plant, which I'm sure the seed for this plant probably washed in some rain or something like that from the other side of the fence there where we have about four or five different Prax cherry tomato plants that volunteer for us each year. So we let this one go. I've already been uh, harvesting some uh, tomatoes off of it already. But there are several, several more coming here real soon. And right next to that, we planted out a spaghetti squash, which is just starting to form a fruit there. I haven't seen any other fruits yet but it is climbing itself all the way through the fence and going into the garden onto the other side there too so once these plants get growing they sure start to vine out and take up as much space as they can now on the other side of the corn patch here we also have a another squash plant doing the same thing Vines are really, really taken off and heading all over the place. Really, really stretching out. Just not seeing any squash fruit yet on these plants. So we might just end up with really cool plants this year versus any production. But that's kind of our fault for how we got everything planted out this year. A bit late and I'm sure some of these starts were a bit stressed out being a little root bound into their containers the squash really just does not like to be uh, root bound or transplanted per se so um, they are growing like crazy now though so all right here in the back alley here of our place, we've got our sunflowers that are growing. We've got one of them just leaning just a little bit too much under all of the weight. But look at those things. Look how tall those are. Sunflowers both on this side and the other side are just putting out dozens and dozens of flowers. I mean, look at all of that. The great thing about all of these sunflowers is all of the bee action that is going on right now. Bees are just grabbing as much pollen as they can and there are just tons and tons of bees that I see out here all day long, especially early in the morning. That's the best time to really come out. They're just really coming out, collecting as much as they can sure would love to see those beehives that are getting all of that really great honey but right now let's take a look at our corn patch that we grew back here or planted back here and it's just really starting to get going right now so it hasn't put out any of the pollen tassels or anything yet so it's still a couple of weeks behind the other uh, corn that we have growing and I also believe that the corn that we have growing on the other side of the side alleyway there also has a shorter um, grow length so it's going to produce its corn faster than other varieties this one here should be getting up there pretty soon now I'm trying to remember exactly what variety this is because one of these two is either the bodacious corn that is uh, offered on Ray's seed shop, the little shop of seeds. I'll put a link down below in the description to that. He's got a variety called bodacious corn. 
I planted that out and also a variety from Baker Creek both of them a yellow sweet corn variety as well so I'll put a link down below for Baker Creek's corn varieties they have but uh, yeah these are coming along really nicely In the next week or two we should be seeing um, pollen tassels start popping out and once those start to come up and form the plants really start to stretch themselves up as that uh, pollen tassel starts to form and when they start stretching up like that that's when they really start putting in the energy towards uh, forming ears and those uh, silks to form the kernels on your ears so be looking forward to uh, keeping an eye on this corn harvest as it comes up here probably in the next month or so so back here in our back patio area kind of looking at right now is a bush bean to believe this seed probably fell into this pot or the soil at some point and came up but I believe this is the same bush variety that we have just above here in our raised bed and right back behind it in this little pot here we have a watermelon we planted out that's really just starting to vine out like crazy right now it's going all over the place it's leading up into our cucumber trellis and actually starting to form some fruits but I figure what I'll do here in one of our upcoming episodes is do a summer garden tour where we'll take a really good look at the whole back patio area and all of the gardens around. But for this next part here on today's episode, I wanted to just kind of talk about our beans that we've got growing in the gardens right now. We do have this above ground raised bed here, which is in our back patio. This one here is a four foot by two foot uh, above ground raised bed and I planted out for the summer season some bush beans. As we can see inside here too, already starting to form some beans right there. I think if we look back here, we've got some really nice ones too. Yeah, look at those. It's time to start harvesting up some beans because it's a uh, one of the things you want to do if you're growing beans is when they start forming the bean pods, you want to start harvesting them. The more you harvest, the more they're going to produce. You're going to start putting out more and more flowers, put out more and more beans. As you can see, these plants are raring to go for some really great production. We should have a bunch of really, really good green beans coming out of this patch here. So we're on the other side of the fence as I mentioned earlier there next to the corn I did just see the spaghetti squash. I haven't noticed before From the spaghetti squash that's as I was saying is pushing itself through the fence there and Grabbing a hold of things and growing like crazy here on the other side of the fence I've got this pallet back here. I keep for growing some pole beans, which we planted out down here. And our bean plants are really just now starting to kind of take off. As you can see here, they're starting to pull themselves up. But they're really actually just trying to compete for light and everything from these squash vines that are actually just really intruding on this pole bean space. Well, the thing about pole beans though is, and like other beans, they kind of have a little slow start to them when they get growing. But once they get going, just like the squash and everything else, these vines just take off and they go crazy. So I suspect in the next week or two, this pole bean is going to really, really take over this pallet, possibly start growing up along our actual uh, fence here as well. Here again is that Prax Cherry Tomato patch I told you about just a moment ago. We've been pulling lots of ripe tomatoes off of it already. 
It looks like I've got to take some more off of it today. But look at all of those tomatoes in there. These plants are going to produce a ton of tomatoes. And what I've done over, well, actually, I just did the first time last season. Uh, this patch grew out. I took most all of these tomatoes that were ripening and I uh, took a couple of packages, several packages actually, down to the National Heirloom Expo, which we'll be heading to in a couple of weeks and kind of hand them out as treats for people there at the exposition. Plus, I tell people to save the seeds too, grow their own cherry tomatoes. So as you see here, I got another kind of wood structure, bean trellis type of thing here where we're growing some more pole beans. And it's the same thing. Beans are just now starting to really reach up and grab a hold of stuff, twisting itself around and grabbing things. And I'm kind of training it down so it'll keep coming up and then training it around. So hopefully I can get more use of the space instead of letting it just sprawl straight up into the fence. But like I said already, beans kind of have their own way to them. So I can try to keep up with it, but I'm sure at some point they're just gonna really start taking things over. So if you've been watching the Urban Gardener over the last couple of seasons, uh, we, have this ladder here which we would climb up to our rooftop to grow our rooftop peppers we don't grow our rooftop peppers right now we're not allowed to this year i still got this uh ladder in the back patio area and i thought it'd be kind of cool to take some of the scarlet runner beans that i collected at last year's national heirloom expo really really cool looking uh, bean seeds so I planted those out here into one of our five gallon water wicking bucket systems I'll put an i-card above to that episode where we uh, built these uh, five gallon water wicking buckets they're an excellent excellent way of growing in small spaces and keeping really good moisture levels for your plants. As you can see, we've got two vines, two vines growing, one kind of coming up this way, one growing up this way. And they're really, really, as you can tell, taking off now and grabbing hold and twisting all around our ladder. Climbing all the way up. At this point, they're really, really putting out the flowers right now. Look at those. Just beautiful little flowers. Awesome color. Really adding some really, really great color to our back patio garden here. And soon, as these flowers are being pollinated, they'll start forming our bean pods. I kind of can't wait to see the actual bean pods as they start forming too. That's something we'll keep an eye on as those bean pods come out. And what I'll do is uh, dry them out and harvest them later on for an episode coming up. And then I'll show you what those bean seeds really look like. They're just amazing. got here is our back alleyway space where we grew out our container potatoes this last season. I'm going to put up an i-card right now to the episode where we did the harvest for our container potatoes and I think that this space in the alleyway which is just right behind my neighbor's garage and fence line here he let us utilize this space because what I was looking for with those potatoes was just a more sun exposure to give those potatoes just a little bit more light and I think that might have been what was the trick because we had a really really decent potato harvest I really encourage you to go check out that episode and see how things are going plus for this next season I've got some ideas to really kind of increase our yields in our container potatoes so we'll look forward to that coming up but for now, 
that the container potatoes are done, I'm gonna utilize this space for something else. And uh, what I have is planted out in these three buckets right here are some more pole beans. So um, like the uh, back patio area where I have the pole beans growing, I'm gonna need to get some sort of trellis system set up for these pole beans to grow up into and grab onto as they grow and mature and develop our really good uh, green beans for later on this season to harvest. So that's what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on a cool little project. I'm just gonna put together a couple of different slats and create some sort of little trellis so that we can uh, encourage these beans to grow up. There we go. Just a nice little quick slap together project. Simple trellis. Fit that space. Give something for these beans to grow up into. I really kind of like this here. The only thing I think I would do in addition to this trellis there is probably painted. I'd probably paint it blue to kind of match the trimming and if you notice also our tomato cages too. These were given to me by a neighbor. So yeah maybe we'll uh, paint the trellis blue. I'm not sure yet. You'll just have to check in on a future episode of the Urban Gardener and see if that's something that we do or not. But we should uh, be seeing some really good growth out of these uh, beans, hopefully vining up into that trellis here pretty soon. So there we go. We've got ourselves a really, really nice trellis there that'll uh, help our beans grow, which are taking up that space now that we have our potatoes growing in. But after the beans are done, I'll probably use that trellis again for some peas coming this winter and spring. So we'll try to see how that works out as well before we go into doing our next year's container potatoes. As I mentioned earlier, I've got some ideas to make those potatoes uh, uh, grow even better next year. So hopefully tune into that and we'll have some great potato harvest when it comes to that too. But as you can tell, corn's doing really, really well as we looked at earlier there. I'm really excited about being able to harvest up some really, really great sweet corn. And I'm gonna have to start pulling out some of those beans in those bush beans in the back patio there. So that's probably something I'm gonna get to here in just a little bit too. But I wanna really thank you all for joining me on this kind of short little uh, catch up episode here to kind of catch up on what's going on with our corn and our beans right now. We've got plenty of other episodes coming up here as well as we'll catch up with some of the other things growing on our in in our garden. As I mentioned earlier, probably do maybe like a uh, summer garden tour and possibly break it up into maybe two episodes. We'll kind of focus on some tomatoes and peppers as we usually do. We'll catch up with those and see how they're growing right now. And then we'll kind of take a look at everything else that's growing around and in the gardens as well. Everything's just kind of blowing up right now. I've kind of got monster plants in the garden. It's a really great thing to have. So I'm really looking forward to having you on 
join me on some of those upcoming episodes as well though. I want to thank you though for joining me here today on this episode. So if you haven't, please give it a big, big thumbs up. Hit that like button. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything at all, any questions for me, please hit me up in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from each of you. And if you haven't already, like I said at the beginning, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification next to it, be notified of upcoming episodes of The Urban Gardener as we continue growing here. And I'll see you all on the very next episode. me here today is I am going blind it is so bright I'm so bright show you that corn when any whatever blah 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 okay somewhere and it got uh, blah, blah, blah. okay here let's try again <laughs> side alleyway here <laughs> okay potatoes in and let's try that again <laughs> I don't know why I was distracted and I looked that way we're into those group <laughs> not with that that's not what I'm trying to say <laughs> with those uh, not what I want to say either <laughs> after the beans maybe I'll replace uh, those uh, buckets with time for an airplane Got to be right in the line of those things too. They just fly right overhead and catch you at the best moments too. <laughs> All right. <clears throat>